Hi everyone, today we are going to talk about discrete distributions. Now the following distributions I'm going to present are discrete because the outcomes take on integer i.e. whole numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on. On a stats course you'll encounter discrete distributions such as the Bernoulli, binomial, geometric and, so, and the list goes on, you might be wondering why are there so many distributions, are there so many to make our life harder, to make exams harder to pass? The answer is no, uh, these distributions have real life applications. We're going to present here five of the most commonly um, encountered ones on an introduction stats course. The first one, the Bernoulli trial. Okay, Bernoulli, um, named after the French guy. When is it applicable? It's applicable when you're faced with a situation where there is one of two outcomes. These outcomes may be labeled success and failure. Success being the event that you wish to observe. A couple of examples. To uh, coin toss. A coin toss either lads, lands on a heads or tails. Suppose you're interested in the chance that it lands on a head. Then head would be success and tails would be failure. Another example, say you're asking someone out, a random person out on a date, the answer is going to be yes, success or no. Now the outcomes then x can take the value 1 for success, 0 for failure. This Bernoulli is the most basic one of all, but a few other more complicated distributions relies on the idea of the Bernoulli uh, trial and I'm going to present them now. First, binomial. A binomial distribution is basically the sum of n independent Bernoulli trials. Now that is a very condensed version of what a binomial is so let's rephrase it. A binomial distribution is applicable when you have an experiment when there are n trials. We have n number of trials, each one has one of two outcomes, success or failure. The probability of success in each trial is fixed. And finally, that the outcome of the trials are independent. Let's think of an example. Um, think about the coin. Suppose I toss the coin five times and I'm interested in the number of heads I get in those five tosses. That's a binomial. As another example, uh, let x be the number of people, say out of 10 people, who respond well to acupuncture. Now the outcomes of uh, x the, when it's binomial, the minimum value is 0, meaning no success out of n trials, one success out of n trials, two successes out of n trials, and so on, is that a maximum value, yes, it's n, and that is when all trials, all n trials, end up each one is a success. Next, the geometric distribution. The geometric is also based on the Bernoulli and it can be expressed in two ways. It can be described as the number of failures until we get our first success or it can be described as the number of trials needed until the first success where each 
trial as one of two outcomes. If we describe it as the number of failures until the first success, then the geometric can take the value 0 for no failures until the first success, one failure to the first success, two failures, and then and so on. If we describe it as the number of failures, uh, sorry, as the number of trials until the first success, the minimum value will be 1, i.e. we get success straight away, 2, 3 and so on. Notice, unlike the binomial, which has a maximum value of n, this doesn't have a maximum value, so it can go on and on and on. Now let's uh, give you some examples of geometric distribution. Number of uh, coin tosses until we get a first head. That would be geometric. That's quite a boring example. Another example say a number of partners you have until you get married yeah because each partner that you have girlfriend or boyfriend you're gonna get married or not eventually when you get married it's game over finally as an example how about the number of cans of lager you have until you are physically sick now, if we just think about that, why might that be geometric? Well, you take a first can of lager, you're going to be sick or not. Second can, sick or not. Third can, and so on. So, that sounds like it's a geometric, doesn't it? But, in fact, it's not. And that's because the probabilities of um, uh, not being sick uh, falls as you uh, as you drink more and more cans. In other words, the probabilities uh, do not remain constant. And that's because the conditions for the geometric are similar here to the one for the binomial. Next, the negative binomial. Now the Negative binomial is an extension of the geometric because this geometric, the game stops when you've got the first success. The negative binomial asks us the question, a number is interested in the question, the number of trials needed until we get our number of success. Number of trials until we see our successes. Uh, so geometric is a kind of a special um, a ver um, a version of this when r is 1. The outcomes of something that is a negative binomial, the minimum value will be r, because you need uh, r trials to get r successes. That's the smallest number, and that is when every trial um, is uh, a success. Next, r plus one, r plus two, and so on. So this doesn't have a maximum value. An example of something that follows a binomial is let x be the number of hits to my particular YouTube video until I achieve uh, 50 clicks on an advert. Okay, we've seen quite a lot so far, so let's just pause there. Uh, we've looked at the Bernoulli and then we've looked at a group of three of them, binomial, geometric and negative binomial, that uh, kind of depends on the Bernoulli. Next the Poisson. The Poisson distribution is named after a French guy. Uh, it also is the French word for fish, so you could say the Poisson is the fishiest distribution of the lot. Now this Poisson is applicable when we're interested in the number of events in a continuous And the values it can take, it can take a minimum value of zero, so that would mean no events in the interval, one event in an interval, and so on. So it does not have a maximum. Now, all my students think that we apply the Poisson distribution when we're interested in the number of events in the continuous 
interval of particularly of time but um, time is is not applicable to only to time so let's look at some examples uh, first example number of web clicks to a, a web page um, in a day that's an example involving time second number of potholes in a hundred meter stretch of road um, on the way to college if you're a cyclist and um, that would be a concern in this example the interval is not time but distance yet another example not involving time um, number of lines um, I read um, down a novel until I spot a typo in this case the interval is lines of a manuscript now before we leave the Poisson we note that there are some assumptions needed for the Poisson assumptions these are technical assumptions and we're gonna leave them out here because uh, for an intro stats course when we're asked to calculate the probabilities all you need to look out is for the fact that we're interested in number of events in some kind of continuous interval lastly I'm gonna mention the hypergeometric distribution hypergeometric distribution um, I'm not going to discuss it today because it's it's gonna need a video on its own um, and also uh, I think that in many stats courses you don't even see the hypergeometric. On a first course in stats, maybe first year stats course at college, um, you'll see the Bernoulli for sure, the binomial, um, geometric uh, question mark against that, um, you may not see that, negative binomial may not see that, Poisson you'll see hypergeometric um, more rare. So to recap, when you're reading, trying to solve a problem, applied statistical problem, uh, you've got one random variable, decide, determine what outcomes can it take, uh, what values can it take, take on, and what are the features of, this, uh, of the nature of the random variable. That should help you uh, determine which distribution best describes it. Okay, thanks for watching. My name is Phil from statisticsmentor.com.